have a lot of things going on, as you know. We're heading out to Texas right now. But uh, Portland, let's give you a little report on Portland. We have the uh, courthouse very well secure. Our people have done a fantastic job. You hear all sorts of reports about us leaving. We're not leaving until they've secured their city. We told the governor, we told the mayor, secure your city. If they don't secure their city soon, we have no choice. We're going to have to go in and clean it out. We'll do it very easily. We're all prepared to do it. So in Portland, they either clean out their city and do the job and get rid of the anarchists and agitators, which is what they are. They're not protesters. They're anarchists and agitators. We have many in jail. Many of them have been put in jail, and it's going to be a long sentence. They either clean out their city and do it right, or we're going to have to do it for them. Okay. On uh, CARES, I think maybe Steve, would you like to say something on that? Well, uh, as of now, we're very far apart, and because of that, uh, the President and we have discussed a short-term extension to UI and uh, the eviction so that we have some period to negotiate for this right back. And the President uh, We ought to work, work on the eviction so that people don't get evicted. You work on the payments to the people. And the rest of it, we're so far apart, we don't care. We really don't care. We want to take care of the people. The Democrats aren't taking care of the people. The payments aren't enough. The payments aren't enough. You understand that? They're not making the payments. They're not making them high enough. The Democrats are not taking care of the people. Nancy Pelosi takes care of herself, but she doesn't take care of anyone else. You look at what's going on with Schumer. So when Schumer and Pelosi can get together and take care of the people, we'll do something. In the meantime, we ought to stop eviction because that expires very soon. So we want to stop the eviction. How do you rate Kamala Harris as a VP? There's a rumor to I think she'd be a fine choice, Kamala Harris. She'd be a fine, fine choice. Sir, you think you want to pass a short-term bill? A short-term bill? Are you saying you want to pass a short-term bill? I don't hear a word you're saying. Are you saying you want to pass a short-term bill? Well, we're looking at a deadline, obviously, of this Friday. The president's very focused on uh, eviction and unemployment. And if we can't reach an agreement by then, the president wants to look at uh, giving us more time to negotiate this. We're focused on those two things. We want to take care of them now. The rest we can discuss later. They want big bailout money for Democrats that ran cities terribly. Their cities are going down to two. If you look at Portland, you look at what's going on in Seattle, Democrat-run cities, whether you like it or not, they're terribly run, and they're always overtaxed. So they've taxed them too much, and they've run them poorly. And we don't like that. And what the Democrats want are bailout funds, and what we want is we want to take care of people. And we should reward the most of this country that's well run. You know, most of the country is very well run. You're watching a Portland and you're watching Seattle, you're watching New York where they had a 400% increase in crime. 400%! My city that I love, that I left to do this job, and they had a 400% increase, and it's unacceptable. But most of the country is very well run, and Republican cities are very well run. And it's a shame to reward badly run, radical left Democrats with all of this money that they're looking for, for cities to, to throw it away on cities that are poorly run. What about the FBI? Are you confident that uh, Russia did not place bounties on U.S. troops? I don't know. As I told you, I've certainly read about it, and since then I've talked about it. Uh, Colin Powell says it's not true. Uh, Colin Powell's not exactly somebody that I'm a big fan of. Colin Powell says it's not true. Other people say it's not true. Uh, if it were true, I'd be very angry about it. But if you look at Russia, Russia became Russia from the Soviet Union because of Afghanistan. They lost a fortune and a lot of people, a lot of people. So I don't know why they'd be doing it, but if you tell me uh, they're doing it, I will certainly take that under consideration. How would you respond if Russia did turn out to have done that? How would you respond? Uh, I would respond appropriately. Nobody has been tougher on Russia. Nobody has been tougher on China. Nobody has been tougher on Iran than me. And it's not even close. And everybody knows it. Nobody's been tougher on Russia, China, or anybody else.
than me, including our allies, NATO, who I got to pay $140 billion more money. $140 billion. You know what that is? And you know why? That's to hold Russia in check. All right? I did Russia no favor. Nobody's been tougher on Russia than I President, on, on NATO, uh, you just came to order to remove U.S. troops from Germany. How does that keep Russia in check? Well, Germany's delinquent. They haven't paid their fees. They haven't paid their NATO fees. And uh, they're way off. And they've been off for years. And they have no intention of paying it. And the United States has been taken advantage of on trade and on military and on everything else for many years. And I'm here and I've been straightening it out. But Germany owes billions and billions of dollars to NATO. And why would we keep all of those troops there? And now Germany's saying it's bad for their economy. Well, it's good for our economy. Germany is delinquent. They're at 1%. They should be at 2%. And actually, everybody should be at 4%, not 2%, because 2% is too low. But they're at 1%. And they've taken advantage of us for many years. And you think that's bad? They take worse advantage on trade. And I was all set to fix that, and then we got hit with the China plague. But we'll be fixing it. And a guy like Biden, uh, this country wouldn't have a chance. With Biden, our country wouldn't have a chance. Go ahead. But it sounds like China did close that consulate in Chengdu. Are you planning a response for that move by China? No, we'll see what happens. That's all right. We'll are see you, what happens. Are you dropping this demand for FBI money? The FBI building? So the FBI building, they've been trying to build a new building for many years, many, many years. They were thinking about going very far away, but you have to be near the Justice Department. You don't want to be too far away where they have to drive for an hour, hour and a half. Because they had a site way out in Virginia, way out in Maryland. And I said, the best place is right where it is. It's the best piece of property in Washington. I'm very good at real estate. So I said, we'll build a new FBI building. Let's build a new FBI building either a renovation of the existing or even better would be a new building. So we have that in the bill. It should stay. People have wanted a new FBI building now for 15 or 20 years. Uh, then Republicans should go back to school and learn. You need a new building. It's a bad building. It's a dangerous building. You have slabs falling off. It's not a good building from the inside. It's a very expensive building. They need a new building. And we can do it very easily. For me, it would be very, I'd super, I, I would make sure you build a great building at a fraction of the cost and they can have it done quickly. So the FBI building is not new. This is something they've been talking about for many, many years, for decades. So both groups. How close are you to making the decision about banning TikTok? We're looking at TikTok. We're thinking about making a decision. We're going to be watching the hearings today very closely. Because there's no question that what the big tech companies are doing is very bad. Let me just also add on that. Stiffiest TikTok is under Stiffiest review, and we'll be making a recommendation to the president on it this week. So we have lots of alternatives. Do you regret tweeting about that doctor, Mr. President? Do you regret tweeting about that doctor yesterday? Uh, regret what? I was very impressed with her and other doctors that stood with her. I think she made sense, but I know nothing about it. I just saw her on, you know, making a statement with very respected doctors. She was not alone. She was making a statement about hydroxychloroquine with other doctors that swear by it. They think it's great. So she was not alone. Fake news CNN made it like, oh, I said this, I said that. She was with a whole group of people. And you ought to tell your network, the reason their ratings are so bad is because the coverage is so false. If CNN would be honest, and that goes for MSDNC also, but your network is so dishonest in its coverage on just about everything. And there's an example. I was very impressed by her, you know nothing about her. I had never seen her before. But certainly you could put her up and let her have a voice. So what they did is they took down their voice. Now, they seem to never take down the other side. They only take down conservative voices. It's a shame. And with hydroxy, all I want to do is save lives. I don't care if it's hydroxy or anything else. All I want to do is save lives. If we can save lives, that's great. Now, one thing, 
We're doing very well on vaccines and very well on therapeutics. So that's very important. But I happen to be a believer in hydroxy. I used it. I had no problem. I happen to be a believer. Many, many people agree with me. A great test just came out from the Ford Clinic in Michigan, very respected. We'll see how it is. Have you decided how you're going to give your convention acceptance speech yet? Well, I'm thinking about it, but we're picking a location fairly soon. We'll let you know. It won't be here at the White House. It's somewhere in the, it might be. It's something we're thinking about. So back, back to Germany. Are those troops, what signal does it send for Russia? Those troops were always there to defend Europe against Russia. You're right. They're there to protect Europe. They're there to protect Germany, right? And Germany is supposed to pay for it. Germany's not paying for it. So why should we leave them if they were not? We don't want to be the suckers anymore. The United States has been taken advantage of for 25 years, both on trade and on the military. We're protecting Germany. So we're reducing the force because they're not paying their bills. It's very simple. They're delinquent. Very simple. And there are other NATO countries also. Right now, you have eight out of the 28 countries that are paid up. I got them to pay $130 billion a year more, going up to 400. Most of them will be up to date. Wasn't easy, but most of them will be up to date. The one that won't be up to date is Germany. And we spend a lot of money on Germany. They take advantage of us on trade, and they take advantage of the military. So we're reducing the force. Now, if they start paying their bills, I could rethink about it. I would think about it differently. Talk about a coronavirus we talked to uh, Putin about a lot of different things, about mostly arms control. We're working on the vaccine. I think we'll have one. Oxford's doing very well. Pfizer's doing very well. We have a lot of good options. You're going to have to talk that. I can hear everybody can but you. Can you come right here? You can hear everybody can but you. Can you come right on, here? On, 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 on control, did you make progress? Are there going to be formal negotiations? Yeah, there already are. We're, we're in formal negotiations with Russia on arms control. What about bringing China in? On nuclear arms control. What about bringing China in? We'll talk about that later. We're going to work this first and we'll see. China right now is a much lesser nuclear power, you understand that, than Russia. Right now, we are the great nuclear power. We've upgraded our nuclear tremendously since we have the most power. Russia is second and China is third. China is surging, they'll be there at some point. And yeah, we would want to talk to China eventually. Okay. Why not as part of the why not as part of a trilateral negotiation? We thought that we would do it first. I don't know if it's going to work out, but we would do it first, and then we go to China together. Okay? Which I think worked out probably. Did you talk to O'Brien? Did you talk to Robert O'Brien? I did. I wished him well. I haven't seen him in a while, but he went on vacation. He came back. He wasn't well. That's the positive. He's doing very, very well. Why haven't you seen him? He president? said he's doing very well. Why I spoke to him yesterday. Mr. President, are you concerned about reports that a lot of Americans wouldn't accept the vaccine? And what the administration? No, I'm not. I'm not concerned. Well, I'm a therapeutic person too. You know, to be honest, I love the idea of therapeutics, where you go in, you give somebody a transfusion or a shot, and they get better. I am a big therapeutic person. But we're doing very well on vaccines and therapeutics, okay? And as far as Portland is concerned, we've taken a very strong stand. They are anarchists, they're radical, crazy people, and they're either going to straighten it out for themselves, Portland, the police, and maybe if the state gets involved, that means the governor and the mayor. But they're very weak people. They're very weak people. These radicals, these Anarchists are controlling the governor and this mayor. The mayor went into a rally. It wasn't accurately reported by CNN, by NBC. The mayor went into a rally. He thought he'd be their buddy. They excoriated him. They excoriated What they did to him was incredible. Lucky he had five bodyguards, but they excoriated him. NBC, I didn't see CNN because I don't watch CNN. NBC, absolutely covered it like he was their big buddy. No, he was in great danger of dying. He would have been dead if he didn't have his bodyguard. 
These are bad people. These are anarchists. They're agitators. And either they do something or we're going to do it. In the meantime, our purpose there is only to protect our federal buildings, which we're doing with no problem. I mean, they're nasty and they're vicious people, but our people are very powerful people, very powerful. And either they're going to clean up Portland soon, or the federal government is going up, and we're going to do it for them. So either they clean out Portland, the governor and the mayor, who are weak, either they clean out Portland, or we're going in to do it for them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.